moving online for your teaching suddenly? We got you covered. I'm going to be sharing today our top three tools for teaching online. And these are fabulous tools you may be able to use for the rest of the season that you're doing this online work. This is day two in our special series called uh, Let's Do This, Teaching Reading Beyond the Classroom. And I'm excited to share our top three tools with you. Hey, I'm Dr. Marnie Ginsberg from Reading Simplified, and it's our mission here at Reading Simplified to streamline reading instruction and accelerate students' reading achievement. And that's kind of what how we roll here, streamlining things, keeping it tight, not too overwhelming. And so these three tools are probably going to be a very helpful hub of things that you go to every day as you begin your online journey. So let's get started. What are those top three tools? First of all, I, I want to remind you that this is part of a series, as I said, and if you have not joined our Facebook group yet, um, please do that. Uh, go to Let's Do This as a in your Facebook bar to join so you can get all the trainings. This is just a snippet. The ideas for this have come out of a survey from you all, uh, over 1,300 members or audience people, you know, uh, participants uh, shared what they thought with um, uh, about their needs in this time of crisis, actually. And so that's what this is. So yesterday we talked about a realistic streamlined plan for teaching reading. If you missed the day one video, go back and snag that. Now we are on to Wednesday, how to use the top three tools for online learning. Tomorrow we're gonna to talk about outside of the box ways to reach your students from afar. Maybe the technology isn't the option, what else could you do? Uh, resources for parents will be on Friday, including how to help your child practice reading, and then Saturday, hitting the mark. More talk about differentiation. Don't forget there was a PDF that we handed out with hyperlinks to the various resources we recommended. That was part of day one. Again, you can get that in the Facebook group. Let's do this. And if we have one on day two, it'll be there in the units. This is just part of the resources that we are collecting to help you to kind of choose your own adventure. So I want you to be sure that you understand how to snag this. If you go to that Facebook group and join it and then go to units, you can see the resources organized by day. So unit one was day one, unit two will be day two and so forth. So this video will be under unit two for day two, but if you missed yesterday, you can go to unit one. It's a lot easier to uh, navigate in um, on desktop. So just like yesterday, let's think about some principles for kicking this whole crazy thing off. Uh, this is a true uh, crash course in how to think about online tutoring, training, online teaching. First, choose uh, only a handful of resources or online resources to get started. Maybe a couple for you and a couple for your students. Don't try to dump the kitchen sink on them. Uh, start small so that they can get the hang of it. Per Perhaps they can try out two or three of the technologies that we're gonna teach you today, this week. And then if you wanna add things in the coming weeks, that may be helpful, but just don't do too much. Our principle from last, from yesterday was kiss, keep it simple sister, and this is in align with that. I recommend that you create or use a communication or storage hub. This is particularly important since you're not getting to be face to face. No paper files, right? You may already have something, go ahead and use that, something that the school recommends or something that you've already used personally, but I'll recommend some resources if not. But this will be uh, something that's not only um, coherent and organized for you, but also very helpful for the parents and the students so that they don't get overwhelmed trying to find an email or a text message or a remind message or uh, a file on Google Drive. If they try to search everywhere for things, they'll get frustrated. Another tip is to uh, have a plan for naming conventions on all of your files. Create some sort of pattern that's predictable for you and your students, uh, such as ELA underscore March 17 underscore video on writing mini lesson. 
Number four, plan for fun and brain breaks for you and for your kids. It's all new. Uh, we cannot push through this and be um, relentless. We need to have some fun. I bet most of you have already got that plan. Just want to keep it in the hopper. And then also think about what are your forms of accountability? If everything's being delivered virtually, how are you going to make sure that the students do what they need to do and then you can assess them effectively? My cursor doesn't work very well. Okay, so these are the top three tools that I recommend. I mentioned one yesterday, the Zoom platform for web conferencing. It is so amazing what you can do. And I have another video coming in unit two about how to use Zoom. So I'm gonna give you a little glimpse of it here, but the nitty gritty of it will come in actually one video for me and another great video about how to get started by another teacher. Another thing that I think will be very helpful if you don't already have this is to get started on Google Drive and Docs or set up a Google Classroom. Those are different um, features of Google, but either way they help you do that hub business for storage and also documents can be very powerful. Some of you use Seesaw or Class Dojo. There are other ways of organizing your stuff. If you already have a system, of course, at your school, keep going with that. But if you don't have something that's kind of a natural hub for materials and um, tools for just creating documents, um, then I uh, think Google Drive will be helpful. And then finally, probably pretty new to you is using Loom. Loom is a screen sharing video app or software or a video recording software. So I'll show you a little snippet of that. And that can be very helpful for communicating with your students and in all sorts of ways. So that can make up the gist of what you might do in a typical day. Use those three technologies. So here's a little example. Uh, my daughter is in a small school and day one after school is canceled, she and her classmates got right onto Zoom with the teacher. So the teacher was there for about 40 some minutes, I think, giving lessons and students were sharing and talking. You can see on the right side of the computer screen, those are the pictures of the students and the teacher. And then the teacher has the whiteboard where she can make notations. We're gonna be explaining all the ways you can, not all, some of the best ways you can use that tool in that other video, video that you'll find in unit two. And then of course you got your student there uh, doing some work. So that is what Zoom looks like. It's got, that's just the tip of the iceberg though with that program. So, uh, in fact, this was a little example. Take your daughter to work. She went to work with my husband. <laughs> she was happy. She got to, when, when you're using Zoom, you can hear the teacher and see the teacher. You can also hear and see the students. So it feels a lot more like school than you might imagine. So that was tip number one. That went by fast. Don't worry, the video for um, more about Zoom and how to make it work for you if you're gonna go that path is in unit two. I didn't wanna put it in here because maybe you're gonna use something else like Google Hangouts or some other tool. So we're keeping that separate and that's where you can choose your own adventure. Go get that video on Zoom. Uh, again, we'll have two, I believe, within the, the, uh, within the day to help you figure out how to get started on Zoom. I highly recommend it. The next thing is to, if you haven't already, organize your Google Drive. Here is a hypothetical that I created. So I would create this a folder called Mrs. Ginsburg's class, and this would be information. You can see it there at the, the top pink arrow. This would be information, resources, whatnot, that I would send to parents and students. So it would not be um, private grading information. It would just be stuff that's communi community materials, and I could give that link to that folder to my students and parents. So they would always have, we would always have in our Google Drives the same resources and keep things um, coherent that way. And if you want to have um, small group instruction where you video record them and you wanna include those links, cause that's something you can do with Zoom is capture a recording and send that. 
you'd probably want that information to be in a separate category. So that's where I put Mrs. Ginsburg's small groups as a separate folder. And I wouldn't give that whole file, wouldn't give the whole file name to anyone, but I could give, maybe I had my groups labeled by butterflies, dolphins, otters, polar bears, sharks. I could give the butterflies, um, their, the kids and their parents, that folder link and I could give dolphins the other folder link and so on. So that would be a, an easy way to make sure that you're communicating clearly and uh, people know where to go to get the resources. So say we go back to Mrs. Ginsburg class. This is again, just a hypothetical. What if you had three major folders? The first one would be administration, not again, not again school administration or your grading, but um, the overall policies and ways to communicate with the parents and also maybe some tips for the kids. Two, number two would be where a lot of the resources would be, um, the assignments, um, kind of self-explanatory. And number three would be resources like if you're going to give them access to um, RAS Kids, it, the link might be in there. So that is an example of how to use Google Drive. I know it's really fast. We will have some resources for uh, learning more about Google Drive and Google Docs and um, also Google Classroom if you want to set that up. That's even more sophisticated. It has a lot of power. I think it could be a, uh, advantageous for you because um, I was blown away by the what I saw on the video that I'm going to share with you about the potential. So it could serve you not only in this online period, but maybe um, when you get back into the school. So Google Drive, Google Docs, make sure it's organized and think about how you're going to communicate to parents ahead of time. And then finally, I want to give a pitch for Loom. It is a free um, screen sharing or video recording app that is super easy. It can be added as a, ex an extension on your Chrome browser, and they just made it so that um, educators can get free access forever. That is a new thing. So it's really fabulous. It is so easy. And here's one example of screen sharing where say I was teaching um, some of my first graders how to use Google Drive and I would be able to show them on my screen what I was seeing and I can also show them my face. You see that down there in the uh, lower left hand corner so that it's more personable. And then as soon as the video is over, Loom processes, processes it for a few seconds and then gives me a link. And I can give that link to parents. I can also put that link in a document like that resources um, folder we were looking at earlier. Or if there was an instruction that I did, not, uh, not on how to use a technology, but some sort of teaching of math or teaching of, of, of writing then I could store that in that instruction um, folder that we talked about in Google Drive. So the recording possibilities with Loom are just um, fabulous. And again, it's so easy to use. It processes it quickly and it gives you that link. <laughs> I just love the link. <laughs> so here's another hypothetical. Um, say you have kids do a writing assignment. Say, let's pretend this is Jonah's diary from 317. I just made it up there's not much there, but pretend it was a real assignment and I wanted to talk with a student instead of giving them uh, written feedback. This can be so much better than almost any written feedback because uh, number one, you can probably do it faster. And number two, your young kids may not be able to read it as well. And number three, um, you can probably soften the blow if you're giving critiques through your mannerisms. It doesn't always come through in writing. So this is a tool that you may find that you don't just use for the purposes of, of school closures, but you may use forever in all sorts of opportunities for giving feedback to students. And this is just one of the possibilities with Loom. Another one is just to record yourself you want to share a message with your class. You want to teach them something. Say you have students who cannot get online. Record yourself. And in terms of they can't get online for a live event, you can still record yourself and send it to them um, via email or send it somehow through a Google Drive link. Most families do have a mobile phone so they can at least access recordings like that. And again, if you can't meet with them, synchronously, as we call it, then videos like this can be asynchronous. So 
Let's read together with the class. Hey, let's read P is her pterodactyl. That is weird. This is a funny book. I'm excited to share it with you. And of course, it would be um, a bigger screen than just this little circle. So I highly recommend Loom. Check it out. Again, there'll be a video on how to use it in the Unit 2 in the Facebook group, Let's Do This Teaching Reading Beyond the Classroom. It, these resources will, as soon as we can get them, they'll also be up on a blog post at readingsimplified.com. So be on the lookout for that. And there's that easy peasy link that I like. See, this is a recording of me hypothetically talking about how to use Google Drive with a student. And you can see Loom is in the upper left-hand corner. That little rosette is the symbol that you would find on the Chrome browser. Again, I stopped recording. Boom, this pops up in a few seconds. And then there is a link and I can snag that and use it. I relabeled it down here, Jonah Advice on Diary Day 4. So it'll always be there and it'll be in a library so you don't lose it either. So there you have it, Fast and Furious, my top three recommendations for, for teacher tools. Find some sort of web conferencing. Zoom is free right now for educators and it is fabulous. Regularly it is free for everyone up to 40 minutes. So. It's very powerful. People are using it all over the world. And I will have training videos again in the Facebook group and on the blog, readingsimplified.com pretty soon. And don't forget Google Drive, Google Docs, and maybe more sophisticated Google Classroom. They're all quite remarkable for their ease of use, their organizational benefits for everyone who uses it, and time-saving um, uh, opportunities for you. And then finally, Loom for screen recording or video recording, um, record something for the class, record something for the individual, record something for small groups, and there you have it. How to use my top, well, what my top three tools are and how you might use them, and more is coming about how to use them. Again, tomorrow we'll talk more about the kind of a different topic. What do you do if you don't have a lot of synchronous um, video opportunities with your students? What are outside the box things that we can do? Let's start brainstorming that. And we'll have Friday and Saturday's topics coming up soon. Remember, we are going live 4 p.m. Um, from March 17th for five days. And look for more in the Facebook group. It's a, kind of a choose your own adventure. Um, treasure hunt through the unit so you can get the resources you need. If you already know about Google, you can, uh, or Loom or Zoom, then you can skip those resources. But if you don't, then that's where you need to head so that you don't get overwhelmed and you can get started with online teaching. Are you guys excited yet? It's going to be a little bumpy, but it'll be fun and we'll do it together. Would you like future complimentary trainings like this here at Reading Simplified? Then make sure you ring the bell here at YouTube to become a subscriber so that you learn more of our ways of streamlining instruction and accelerating students' reading achievement. And you can also find us on Facebook at Reading Simplified, usually on Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We go live with other complimentary trainings and we give away some freebies for teachers and parents. So I hope to see you here again next time on YouTube or even on Facebook. Take care.